Welcome to Heartspeak Podcast, episode 168. History completing, not repeating. Well, hello there, wherever you are in the world, you are welcome. It's so good to be with you again. And we have a lot going on this week, as always. And it started off this morning as I'm looking at Suspicious Observers, a very good YouTube channel. It talks about the activity of the sun today. And we are seeing so many sunspots and so many solar flares, which may or may not affect us electromagnetically over these next few days. And this is a wake up call because the sun's been fairly asleep, even though it's heading into what we call a maximum. It's, it's been very quiet and all of a sudden it woke up. And we will feel this even though these electromagnetic waves may pass by the earth a little bit, we feel it in our bodies because we are so intricately connected through our hearts to the heart of the sun. And so you might find your sleep is disturbed or you might find you're thinking very quickly or even you're having difficulty communicating. And so take rest, root yourself into Mother Earth, stay connected to her, because it is through our connection to Mother Earth that we're going to pass through all these times. Now, why is that happening? It's because things are speeding up. So not only did Mars move into Sagittarius on the 15th of December, which means Mars passion, Sagittarius fiery passion about truth and fairness. And it felt that everything is speeding up. Have you noticed that? That there are new rules being put in place every day. And at the same time, there's people coming into their own awareness of how they wish to work with this new energy. I'm seeing it in my work. I'm seeing it in my own work. People having new ideas or feeling that this is their time to act. And a lot of this energy of Sagittarius and the sun and the sun being influenced by the galactic center, which is again a, another heart of the great mother. All of this is sending us these messages, it's time, it's time. And what is it time for? It's time to really align to your own truth, your own purpose for being here. And it's time to clear away, once and for all, old history. And it isn't enough just to say, okay, I'm, I'm no longer gonna carry this. But this is really a time where we are seeing the opportunity to step free of those old, old stories that go back hundreds of thousands of years that we all carry in our genes, in our cells. And this is why I wanted to talk about history completing itself. Because at the same time, this around December the 15th, Chiron, which is the wounded healer, is also going direct in Aries. Now, Chiron takes somewhere around four, on average, four years to go through a sign, but it goes through some signs really quickly and through Aries very slowly. So it actually takes seven years to go through Aries. And it started there in February 2019, which, if you remember, was a time we hadn't even heard that word COVID. And it will carry on till somewhere around 2026. And from the middle of July this year, it has been what we call retrograde, going backwards until December the 15th. And I have a real liking for Chiron. We've all got Chiron in our chart. And Chiron is not only the wounded healer, where are we wounded, but also what are we healing in this life and when we heal it, we can then offer that healing to other people. So the story of Chiron was that he was born of parents who, did, who abandoned him, which I honestly think was the best thing that ever happened to him. And he was half man, half horse. And he was very happily brought up by great healers like Aeschylus and others. And then he got shot in the Achilles heel. And because he was half mortal and half immortal, he couldn't heal his wounds and he couldn't die from his wounds. 
So he spent a lot of his life wandering around trying to find healing methods. And even if he couldn't die or heal himself, he helped many others. And this is hence the idea of the wounded healer. Often the best healers come from those who are wounded and yet they can't actually heal themselves. And there came a point where he realized that he had to die to his immortality in order to be able to die in his mortal self and then return into his immortality. And so he changed places with a mortal and he died and ended up in what we call the underworld and Apollo or Zeus saw him there and lifted him up and put him in the sky, which is where we now see him as a constellation or in, in this case, he's an asteroid. But the fact of the matter is that we are all at this time going through a healing of our Aries energy. And that's what I really felt is happening. Because what is Aries? Aries is the self, you know, finding ourselves. It's the kind of hero going out to find themselves. It's that journey we all take when we leave home to find ourselves. And so we are wounded in that ability. We're in some way wounded in our ownership of what it is to be me, ourselves. So we, we've often, as I spoke about last time, we've given our power away to other people, and therefore we can never be whole. We have to regain or recapture those parts of ourselves. And the wound is also that we don't feel we can do something alone. So anybody, and I know some of you do have Chiron in areas in your chart, your natal chart. In other words, you were born at a time when Chiron was last in Aries. So sometimes when you have that, you often feel that you can't do something alone, that you always have to have a group or other people to support your initiatives. So if that's you, you might want to have a look at your chart and see if you have Chiron in Aries. But it, for us as humanity, it's also suggesting that where we are wounded can also be in places where we feel we're not sufficient we're not good enough, we're not strong enough to be able to do something, stand in our own power. And if you understand that, it's often that other people have told us that. You can't do this, you can't, you're not going to be able to achieve this, you need me. And that's when we see the emergence of leaders and, and messiahs and gurus, those who say, follow me, because you can't do it on your own. And at this moment in time, where another big system is happening, which is Pluto and Capricorn, which is actually overturning all these systems, what is showing up with this Chiron in Aries and that Pluto in Capricorn is us saying, hang on a minute, I am not wounded. I am not inadequate. I am not separated from my God. I am whole. And what we're all taking ownership of is that wholeness which is where we are at this present time now what am i saying here i am saying that wherever we feel fear fear equals separation fear we equals inadequacy fear equals that i'm not able to do something without someone else as i mentioned or fear says i am not whole in myself i am not a divine being now and the healing that's happening, as I'm mentioning with Chiron there in Aries, is re-ownership, re-heroship, <laughs> taking ourselves back and saying, I am willing to take responsibility for everything that happens in my life and know that I come from a place of that wholeness and not from that place of a wound where wounding means a separation. That makes sense? So it's really important at this time to recognize where do I talk about myself as if I am separate from love, separate from my abilities, separate from my confidence. These are all the woundings that are happening or have happened. And what I'm recognizing is that there are ancient woundings that have happened over and over and over again, often surrounding empires often involving wars often involving deaths plagues i'm thinking of all these things so that those of you who are following the news have watched to see that countries like austria 
are now choosing to mandate or ban people who are not vaccinated, uh, really laying down very strong rules, passes, and saying, this is what we're going to do. And, you, and one thinks, well, why Austria? That any of us who are European might say that. Well, first of all, Hitler was Austrian and it was very much part of that empire. But if you go even further back, you have the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And this was a huge empire that crossed many, many countries. And so what I'm seeing in, from that country, and then I go over to countries like my own, England, Britain, you see this was a big empire. And who are the countries that are really uh, shutting down, creating more tyrannical approaches to life? They're part, they are part of what was the British Empire. And so I'm looking and saying, wow, this giving away our power to leaders, to an empire, to be serfs, whatever it was, is now breaking down. So not only does Pluto break down organizations like, as we've seen, uh, the politicians, the banking institutions, the medical organ institutions, where people are saying, I don't know if you really know what you're doing. What it's now doing is digging even deeper and saying, let's bring up to the surface much bigger institutions, such as an empire. Does that make sense? So what's happening at this time is old energies that have held people in a, a state of um, suppression, slavery, whatever you want to call it, the, that energy is now being brought to the surface and being revealed. And anybody who has been part of these ancient empires are now being given the choice not to say, I don't need anybody else, but I will no longer be separated from who I am, from my divine light. My, I am myself and I will take responsibility for myself. Thank you very much. So I think we're going to see more of this ancient energy coming to the surface. And then we have even greater wars that have taken place. The Orion Wars, which if you look them up, they took, over, took place over you know, probably tens of thousands of years out in space. And that's only in our very local galaxy. So how many wars or takeovers happened in galaxies that we couldn't even name? Now, I would suggest that this is what I've heard is a very minor part of how the universe functions or the multiverse functions. In other words, you've heard me speak that some ancient people, indigenous people say, there were really only four different planetary groups or, or species that are still at war. And guess what? We're one of them, humanity. The rest of the universe has kind of sorted themselves out, not by giving power to another group, but by taking ownership of their own power. And this is what is happening now. So however impatient you might be feeling about why aren't things sorting out, the reason things aren't sorting out is that there are multiple layers of healing that have to happen. And I want to say, even though I'm a great believer in, in prayer, this isn't about praying that healing happens. Healing isn't about sending something. It's about being something. Being the love rather than sending love. Be the light rather than sending light. Be whole rather than sending healing and wholeness to someone else. Because when we, when we live from the love, the light, the wholeness, we resonate that energy out. And that energy is what is now tapping into so many different areas of our society where we're not saying, do what I say, which is the old pattern, do what I say or don't, or you're not with me. It's more like, I will send my energy out. And if it resonates with you, in other words, to, for you to be the love, for you to be the light, for you to be whole, then so be it. But it's not for me to do it. Okay, so this is a massive healing. And it's interesting that Chiron will continue to be in Aries until 2026 because this is this period of time that I've heard so many times, 25, 26, where I'm sorry to say, we still have many layers of healing to happen. And 
yes, there's a point where we say, well, okay, you use me as a slave. And I think that we've been used as servants and slaves by ETs, other groups, you know, many times. We've probably been on the other side as well, I want to say. We've probably been the masters. But this isn't about me making you feel better. It's about you stepping up and saying, I no longer give my power away to anybody else. And at this period of time, this new world that you've heard me speak about is already there. I heard that back in 2019. I worked with in 2012. This new world grid is already in place. It's like a network. It's already placed, the, the matrix, the, the underlying blueprint is already there. And yes, we're here to enter our energy into it, to, to, to literally bring energy into that new world. But whether you like it or not, what I heard clearly was we will not be allowed to bring the energy of the old world into the new world. Now, does that mean someone's judging? No, this is more like the eye of the needle that we went through, especially last year, where we had to take the bags off our donkey to be able to get through this narrow passageway. So what is that bag? What are those bags? Is it all the baggage of our old stories? What are the stories we keep telling ourselves? And I know you've heard, many of you have heard me speak about this before, but it's like, actually, if you can still tell a story from the past with some energy in it, you have not finished that story. So finding a way of forgiving, letting go, letting off steam, whatever you need to do to move on, it's really important. And again, remember, and I keep seeing saying again today, but remember, we created those stories in order to know ourselves. So at the end of the day, it's not about that other person. That other person was part of your creation in order to help you know yourself or to become more fully realized. So no good sending them love and light. They don't exist. How did you grow? What did you learn? What changed because of that experience? That's all you need to know. How did I become more whole? What part of me did I meet and embrace because of that experience? That's all we have to do. And when we get upset by something that we might hear about or see, and we all get agitated, then that's the time when we say, what is it in that being or that person or that group that is within me that needs healing. When we do that, we change, we grow. This is what it means to expand our consciousness. Expansion of consciousness, consciousness means knowing ourselves. How well do you and I know ourselves? And knowing isn't in the head, it's in the heart. The more of my petals that have opened out, the more of my petals that I accept and acknowledge as part of me, the more conscious I am. That's all that matters. That is expanded consciousness. How well do I know myself through my experiences? So the healing that's taking place is happening on many levels, happening within me, happening within my own consciousness, and in some ways it's being reflected, because again, the outside world doesn't necessarily exist, but it's being reflected in my resonance with past experiences go back tens of thousands of years. So I'm watching people who perhaps have a great fear of dying from COVID. And I think, and I know that they have died in a plague, a black death. How much of what, how much of the fears that are arriving at this time are resonating with something that happened thousands of years ago? It doesn't mean that didn't happen, but that isn't you. You're just resonating with a story. That part, that, that part of you or what you say was a past life, that just exists and that will continue. But what is healing us at this time is a remembrance. It's almost like, oh, I can, I can resonate with that story because I know it's in my own cells. So what do I have to do 
not for that individual who was in the Black Plague, but within me to make sure that I keep myself as well as I can be, or that it's not about dying, but maybe I don't want to die alone. I don't know. I hope you understand it isn't the fact that people died, it's the experience of the dying that we hold in ourselves. We've died over and over again. But what happened to you in those minutes or those hours before death is what we carry into another life. That's what we want to clear. We want to die well. And before we die, we want to live well. And so I'm just bringing together the last thing that's happening this week, which is a full moon in Gemini, 18th and 19th of December. Full moons are about expressing ourselves, outward expression, Gemini, communication, sharing, teaching, talking, listening. So we're going to see much more of that happening over these next few weeks. And what I feel is we're not lacking information. We're lacking our ability to listen, our ability to formulate information. When we put a block up and we say, I don't want to hear anymore, I can't hear that, then somewhere that Gemini isn't flowing with energy. So the ability to be truly in that Gemini energy is to allow ourselves to chameleon, to, to shape shift in some ways into different levels of communication that might be psychic, might be verbal, and it might be communication with nature. So beyond everything else, I ask you to listen. Listen within. Listen to the birds that come and visit your garden. Listen to your thoughts. Listen to your dreams. And as always, filter them through that which feels nurturing and right for your soul, because that's what's most important at this time. So I'm going to leave you with those thoughts. Bless you for agreeing to complete karma this life. Remembering that karma means to take something that doesn't belong to you. And when I hear people talk about, I'm taking responsibility for you, I'm taking care of you, you don't want that. You actually want to say, I'm willing to let you help me, but you're not taking something from me. And when someone says, I will take responsibility, they're building karma. None of us want to be doing this at this time. So we can say, can I help? That's fine. But please, don't take responsibility for something that you cannot ever release until the time is right. Be kind to yourself, be loving to yourself. Don't give away your power, don't give away your responsibility. Walk with peace and respect and support for each other without getting into each other's way. Until next time, bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Heart Speak Podcast with Dr. Christine Page. Please check out all Heart Speak episodes in the podcast archive section on www.christinepage.com. Heart Speak is also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, and now playing on Amazon Music and iHeartRadio. You can also watch the archive podcast on Christine's channel on YouTube and now on Rumble. Connect with Christine on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook, including her newest Facebook group, The Great Mother Calling. Do share with family, friends, colleagues. Join us next time for another edition of Heart Speak.